welcome to Skombeni, a branch of Swaziland Red Cross, the Skombeni Clinic. When I came first here, it was a difficult time because the stigma of HIV AIDS was so huge. You couldn't see it at first when you were at the malls, but as soon as you contact people, you could see almost everyone, every weekend, was on a funeral. So we have to try and to make programs not only on the level of the clinical aspect, but also on the psychosocial aspect. But now people are actually realizing that HIV is there and it is important that if you are HIV positive or you must know your status and if you, you, you know that you are HIV positive, then you've got to take treatment because there is no other way. At the early stage of the program, many, speci uh, specifically medical personnel, uh, were convinced that it is impossible to establish ARTs in uh, health clinics situated on the countryside. But uh, our idea was, and still is, that whenever we want and we try to uh, tackle these uh, huge health problems in southern Africa and other places of uh, that world, we have to bring the possibilities of testing, counselling and therapy to the people in the villages. As we quickly come in, we are making a brief entry into the clinic's reception area. Come on. Come with me. At the clinic, there was just two nurses and a few volunteers working in the home-based care pro uh, program, which already was there. But then we had to start to search nurses, which was not easy with the brain drain to Europe and the United States. And also to train them, to set up buildings and to prepare the clinics, to make contact with government. We had to convince, first of all, our people working already in the uh, health institutions on the countryside that with a proper training they are more than capable also to follow these kind of programs. So that was one of the first components we had to start with a very proper and long-term and ongoing teaching of our own staff. If I look now at this team, we're still working with the same nurses who came in the beginning. Not one even left us. And of course, they more nurses came. And I'm so proud and feel so good to look at them. They are just fantastic. They're so, they have so much knowledge, they work in a professional way, they're so much committed, and they're, I, I think they're so much self-confident. Go. Five years ago there had been many, many people suffering from HIV. They had been living in their uh, villages out on the countryside and we had to offer whenever at this stage we could not give them the ART, which makes nowadays, as fortunately we all know, makes a normal life possible. But at this stage, we had the home-based care. That means uh, we also had to look after the people who were too late to come to the program and therefore were dying in their own villages. So we established with 
the, uh, a lot of very engaged volunteers of the Red Cross that they go for the villages for home-based kids. Mm. We have voluntary counselling and testing within our clinics. Uh, some of the patients or clients that we test, then they are positive, and uh, that is the gateway that we use towards a, a antiretroviral uh, therapy. And at the early stage of the program, we could not offer the people uh, the necessary treatment. So many, many of them said, why should I go to the lab? Why should I get to know that I'm positive without getting the chance for the ongoing treatment, which is absolutely necessary? I mean, people have been encouraged because they can actually see what we have been doing. They can see uh, some people, you know, within their communities that have been sick and they've taken up the service and they can actually see improvement. So it's more easier now to talk about HIV and to introduce HIV to a client, maybe as a nurse, to say, can we offer the test? Before it was a bit difficult because, you know, there were so many uh, beliefs about the whole thing. Now, each time a client goes to a clinic for whatever reason, maybe just for a cough or, or a broken leg or something. And now every client is offered an HIV test and then more people are taking them up. So. Also kids are affected by the issue of HIV AIDS as well when it comes to art, they are also on art. So this is where we keep the pediatric or that for kids. So before the client is started on ART, we have to assess if the patient is actually eligible for starting ART. That is, uh, we check the CD4 count, uh, and then we also have the clinical staging, which is a, a guideline from WHO. And if the client is actually um, eligible, then we prepare the patient for, for ART. That is the therapy. And actually before they even start taking their medicines, they usually have at least two sessions in which they are taught. And also there is a session in which the patient and the health worker, they discuss why they are taking the medicines and how they should take the medicines. But then it is important that the patient is ready mentally uh, or psychologically that this is a lifetime uh, uh, treatment. So, so for, for, okay. So this is Notando. She's 12 years old. When we got the results back, um, the CD4 was quite low. And in view of the opportunistic infections that she has, like the rashes, the warts on the face, the diarrhea, the coughing, the abdominal pain, um, it was decided that we put her on antiretroviral therapy. So, so far from November for the past four months she has been on treatment and she has improved quite remarkably. The number of markings that have been made indicate the number of tablets that have, have been taken. And if a patient is supposed to come and collect their medicines and they don't come to pick up their medicines, they are also followed up at home to find out if they are having any problems with the medications or maybe they are too sick to come to hospital. Okay. 
So the counting and the ticking in the appointment book really help us make sure that the patient is taking the drug for that now. Now I was telling the patient the importance of adhering on the medication. We had to count the number of days she had gone with the medication, comparing it with the number of the pills in the container to see if it corresponds. 28. If this patient don't get the pills or they, they don't take them according to the way they've been told, they default the treatment, you find that there's treatment failure. It gives the virus a chance to multiply even further and, and become resistant to the pills. We make sure that the patient doesn't reach the stage of treatment fail, because usually with treatment failure, the result is fatal. We focused on the beginning of the program first to the pregnant women. Pregnant women uh, giving birth to their children and being HIV positive, he wanted to avoid and he wanted to give the newborns a chance to start their life without being HIV positive, in spite of the fact the mother is HIV positive. And this is nowadays possible. The other component or service that we offer is a PMTCT, which is a prevention of HIV from mother to child. And uh, the, the goal is actually working towards an HIV-free generation. That is, we are working towards having babies that would be born without HIV. But then the other thing that we now know is that children, if they are not diagnosed early, if the HIV infection is not picked up early and put on treatment, we know that by the end of their first birthday, if nothing is done, about half of them will be lost to the disease. They would actually die. And if the mother is tested positive, then we offer them the prophylaxis treatment depending on the CD4 count. <laughs> Okay, If maybe the CD4 count is, is low according to the WHO standards, then we offer them the treatment, the full treatment, that is uh, the antiretroviral treatment. But then if the CD4 count is average, then we will be offering prophylaxis treatment so that we prevent or we make sure that the virus is, is lowered in the body. But of course there are instances where you find that maybe the baby will be infected during delivery. So even after delivery there is a follow-up with the baby from the hospital. That is, a, we offer the prophylaxis treatment for the baby for at least six weeks to make sure that the baby is actually, um, uh, the chances of actually transmitting uh, or getting the virus are, are, are minimal. Most of the time, if we have given the treatment uh, or the prophylaxis treatment, then most of the babies have tested negative at six weeks. Mahola Clinics is the same clinic as the Sikombeni, except that it is situated in a peri-urban area, uh, about five kilometers from Babani city towards the west.
The problems that we encounter with our clients in this peri-urban area is that they don't have much, they don't have land at all to cultivate, so food security problems are an issue at Mawala. When we look at the quality of service, well, it's fine, but then we, we are actually saying that when it is community level, it's easier to manage them and the quality of service that we offer is actually great compared to, to, to what we have in a peri-urban. I go to Upeda and Jen Kariswa, which is Gomba, as a Sinegi band and story and as fun. I go to Shaka Kulu, Mosum, Tolambido. Welcome, Margaret Togo Makakula. Our HIV AIDS client who happens to be a traditional healer around this community. She strongly believes in the fact that collaboration, partnership between the, 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 the modern medicine and traditional medicine is imperative. And she is not happy about the fact that this modern medicine is actually leaving them behind. In as much as she is not content, she is also happy about the possibility that's, that the Red Cross is on the verge of actually unearthing that of conducting a workshop together with traditional leaders as well as traditional healers where possibilities of partnership can actually be well dissected. Uh, <laughs> Some of our clients are into these traditional uh, practices and the way to actually work things out in a very good manner will be actually coming together with our traditional healers and thresh away a way forward from there. HIV has become a chronic manageable disease, at least that brings some smile to our faces. Yeah. And uh, of course, working with Red Cross for me, it has always been good. I, I, there is something about the organization which is actually making me grow, you know, as an individual. The kind of services, you know, it, it, it makes me grow and that's something which is actually encouraging with me. Then I, I feel I have to stay and do more for Red Cross and for the people. Fortunately, we have a very solid partnership with our sister society and my deep hope is that this goes on, that we can find sponsors for the long run and then I'm quite confident for the future. On the other hand, if we leave our partners at this stage of development of the project, I don't think they can go on on their own. And uh, our commitment has to be for long run and uh, I hope people will understand and that this successful partnership can go on for the benefit of the people of Swaziland. All this together, I think it gives me confidence to look forward to a future as we all wish to see a new HIV AIDS free generation in Swaziland. You know, you go home at the end of the day and you, you are happy that at least there's someone who's getting better. So I think that's very, very good. <laughs>